Hello everyone and welcome to Life Begins at 20. My name is Mark and today I have the brand new Commander 2016 deck, Stalwart Unity, to open for you. This is one of the five new Commander decks with each having a four colour Commander. Kineos and Tira of Miletus is this deck's Commander with the colours red, green, white and blue. The partner mechanic is also something new to Commander 2016, where you can have two commanders if they both have partner. The combination of their colour identity determines which colours you can have in your deck. If you decide to do this, the two cards start in the command zone, and the command attacks if they get removed only applies to each individual card rather than together. This would then cause the remaining deck to be 98 cards. Each commander box contains the following. A 100 card commander deck which includes 4 foil commanders, foil oversized card of your commander, 10 double sided tokens, a deck storage box, a deck strategy insert which talks about what cards are in the deck and strategies for it, and a magic quick reference guide. So let's have a look in the deck and see what's inside. I'll have a full link in the description below for the actual cards themselves. You can have a look on Wizards of the Coast for that, or I'll just give the full link down in there of every single card that's in the deck. So first up we have Kinea Centura of Milatis. No idea if I said that right, but never mind. So for red, green, white and the blue you get a 2-8. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from his or her hand onto the battlefield, then each opponent who didn't draws a card. So it's a really nice way of going... Look guys, I'm doing really nice things here. You don't want to attack me. You really don't. And as a 2-8, he's going to survive most things, to be perfectly honest. So, And people just won't want to get rid of it. I do like the artwork on this card, though. Next up, we have Kram, Ludvig's Opus. Uh, so for 3, a blue and a red, you get a 4-4 four, four with flying in haste. Whenever an opponent casts his, second, his or her second spell each turn, draw a card. Not going to say no to any uh, card draw there, and to be perfectly honest, lots of opponents, later on in the game, this may end up getting you a fair few cards each turn. Next we've got Ludovic, Necro Alchemist. So for one, a blue and a red, you get a 1-4. At the beginning of each player's end step, that player may draw a card. If a player other than you lost life this turn. So basically it's a nice way of going, look guys, if you attack other people you get a benefit, so you don't want to attack me. And lastly of our legendary creatures, we've got two, a green and a white for a 2-5, which has got flanking. Uh, whenever a creature without flanking blocks this creature, the blocking creature gets minus one, minus one to the end of turn. So creatures your opponents control without flying or reach can't block creatures with power two or less. This is really nice, as it doesn't just affect you, it affects everyone. So... If you've got something, if you've got an army that your opponent has loads of flying creatures or doesn't have reach, you can just send loads of little 1-1s one in over and over and over again. And it will just like whittle them down slowly. Plus, it just means that your opponents can go and attack each other at will. It's fine. It just means that your opponents are less likely again to attack you. The whole point of this deck is that you can build yourself up while they're just killing each other. Because they won't want to get rid of this card unless it's affecting them. Then we've got our double-sided tokens there. Like I said before, I really do like those. So first up, we've got Veteran Explorer. So for one, you get a 1-1. One, one. When he dies, each player may search his or her library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield. Then each player who searches for his or her library this way shuffles it. To be perfectly honest, everybody's going to want to kill that. Everyone. You're just happy for it to die. Even you're going to be happy with it to die because it's just going to be land ramp for everyone. Humble Defector, so for one and a red, you get a 2-1, which you can tap to draw two cards. Target opponent gains control of Humble Defector, activate this ability only during your turn. So, again, you're just going to share share the wealth with everyone. So they're just going to be like, well, we don't want to attack you, you're doing really nice things for us. Orzov Advocist is our next card. So for two and a white, you get a 1-4. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature he or she controls. If a player does, creatures that player controls can't attack you or a planeswalker you control until your next turn. Again, you're just helping other players to not attack you. You can then build your army up as well, so... 
you know, you're just you're just helping other players while you get yourself bigger, and they can just deal with each other. Horizon Chimera, we've seen this again in Untropic Uprising as well. So for two, a green and a blue, you get a 3-2 flash flying trample. Whenever you draw a card, which is going to be quite a lot with the way this deck is, you gain one life. You know, everybody's going to be happy for you to be drawing cards because they're going to be doing it as well, so they won't notice your life total getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Soul Ring being a commander staple there. Commander Sphere again for mana. Assault Suit. So for four, you get a piece of equipment where creatures get plus two, plus two, and has haste and can't attack you or a planeswalker you control and can't be sacrificed. So at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of equipment equipped creature until the end of turn. If you do, untap it. Great. It's just a piece of equipment which basically you can pass it around to everybody so they can't attack you. They might like it because they're then, again, buffing up their creature, but it won't be attacking you. So you're helping another player kill someone else quicker while you're remaining intact. Evolutionary Escalation. So again, for one and a green, at the beginning of your upkeep, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, and three on one and opponent controls. So if you form a little alliance with someone, you can go, look, mate, I've just I've just made your creature bigger. You don't need to attack me. Fine. Ghostly Prison is one of the two cards in this deck which uh, taxes players for attacking you. So if you manage to get this up, and we are propaganda as well. If you get both of those up, people aren't going to want to pay four to attack you for the, each creature. You know, just not going to want to do that. So if you can get those up, you've got a nice little wall there to hide behind and they'll just have to deal with these before they can deal with you. Sphere of Safety, so for four and a white, creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures, where X is the number of enchantments you control. If you can get all three of these up, they're going to have to pay a hell of a lot just to be able to attack you. Which means that while they're dealing with each other, because they'll ignore you because it costs too much to attack you, you just get yourself bigger and finish them all off later on. Sword to Plowshares, so for a white exile target creature, its control gains life equal to its power. Great. It just It's just a nice way of either you get rid of something big of theirs, and yeah, they gain some life from it, but that threat is now gone. Or you could probably do it to yourself as well, if there are any creatures in here that you want to get rid of. Arcane Denial, so for one in the blue, counter target spell, its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of next turn's upkeep. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep as well. So it's almost like a counter spell you don't want, but it's got a plus side for them, so they're not going to be quite as angry at you for getting rid of something that they wanted to play. Beast Within, destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 beast creature token. Again, this could be something your opponent has which is massive. It could be a really important artifact or enchantment that they've got, and you just turn it into a 3-3 creature got nullified a big threat there. Silver and Reclamation, so for three green and a white of one of the new cards here, exile up two artifacts and or enchantments, or you can basic land cycle it for two. There are plenty of really, really important artifacts and enchantments in the uh, Commander 2016 decks, and there probably is in the format itself. So if you've got the mana and you need to get rid of stuff, great card. Else, if you need some land, you can use that. Happy days. Cultivate is our next for two and a green. You can search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, put one on the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, and shuffle your library. Nice bit of ramp there. Kadama's Reach, we've got some more ramp going on here. So for two and a green, search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those, put one on the battlefield, the other into your hand. So it's basically the same thing. Migratory Roots, so for three, a white and a blue, you get to create four 1-1 one, one birds tokens with flying, and you can land cycle it if need be as well. Just again, make yourself a nice little army behind your wall of taxes and wait for your opponents to kill each other and then pick them off with these. Treacherous Terrain, this will be a fantastic card for just finishing someone off. So for six, a red and a green, Treacherous Terrain deals damage to each opponent Tone equal to the number of lands that player controls. Later on in the game, once they've all whittled each other down, bang, swing in with this. You could probably kill someone quite easily or make it available for them so you can just pop them off with an attack. Got a couple of. Okay, we've got our planes up here for some reason and some islands. Interesting. Selfless Squire. Fantastic card. 
will definitely end up putting this into my cube or at least testing this out. So for three and a white, you've got a 1-1 one, one with flash. When it enters the battlefield, prevent all damage that we dealt to you this turn. And whenever damage that would be dealt to you is prevented, put that many plus one plus one counters on selfless squire. Someone swings in massively, you've got a nice fog effect going on here, and you're just going to get a massive creature to be able to swing in with next turn. Or potentially you've got a nice big blocker, which is going to, hard to be hard to deal with from your opponent's side of things. Prismatic Geoscope, again, a really nice card here. So for five, enters the battlefield tapped. Fine, it'd be, it'd be absolutely amazing if it didn't do that. So with Domain, you can tap it to add X mana in any combination of colours to your mana pool where X is the highest number of basic land types among lands you control. Great. Really solid card there. Benefactor's Draft. I love this card. This is this was my second favourite one for cube. We'll end up having this in there. So for one and a green, you get to untap all creatures. Until the end of turn, whenever a creature an opponent controls blocks, you get draw a card and you draw a card. Worst case scenario... You're drawing a card for two. You can swing in with a load of creatures you don't mind dying, and you get to draw a load of cards from it. And your opponent, if you're racing them, will end up walking into a wall of blockers. Nice, nice card. Entrapment Maneuver. So for three and a white, target player sacrifices an attacking creature, and you get to create X 1-1 one, one soldiers, where X is that creature's toughness. Yes, they get to choose which creatures attacking you, but the likelihood is if you've got all the rest of the taxes up, they're only really going to try and swing in with one. And if you can get to kill one of their big threats and create a nice little army, great. Seeds of Renewal, so for six and a green, you've got another one of the Undaunted spells. Return up to two target cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile this once it's done. With you playing in a five-player game, this will end up being four cheaper, so two and a green. And you could end up getting either your enchantments back if you need them to be able to tax or creatures that you might want. Great card. Zedru the Great Hearted. So you've got for one, a red, a white, and a blue. You've got a two-four. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, draw X cards, where X is the number of permanents you own that your opponents control. There are cards in here, especially with the artifact on top of another one of your creatures you control, plus the creature that taps for cards and you can pass it around. This will end up being really useful. Plus, for a red, white, and a blue, you get to give your opponent a card you control to be able to draw more cards. Happy days. Progenitor Mimic. This is probably one of my favourite cards from this deck anyway. So for four, a green and a blue, you've got a Nought Nought Shapeshifter. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. So you could end up getting something massive that your opponent has, creating a copy of it on your next turn, and just keep doing it. Have yourself a massive board of some great creatures. Hushwing Griff, so for 2 and a white you get a flash creature of 2-1 that's flying. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. It could affect you a little bit, but to be honest it's going to affect everybody else more. Especially that artifacts deck with so many enter the battlefield triggers. It's just going to nullify them. Great little card there. Chasm Skulker. So for two and a blue, whenever you is for a one one, whenever you draw a card, pull a plus one plus one counter on it. The amount of card draw you're gonna have, this is gonna get huge. Whenever it dies, create a X one one blue squid creature tokens with island walk where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on it. To be perfectly honest, that is great value. He's gonna get massive unless dealt with straight away. And then you get the value from it from when it dies, creating a nice little army for you, which again, you'll just end up swinging in with to finish someone off. Edric, Spymaster of Trest. Nice little card here in this deck. So for one, a green and a blue, you get a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. People are going to be happy for you to be hitting them. Yeah, it might only be like, you know, a couple of creatures, but they're not going to be so bothered about you damaging them because they're going to be drawing cards out of it. Guafa Hazid Profiteer. So for one, a white and a blue, you get a 2-2. Two, two. You can pay a white and a blue and tap him to put a bribery counter on target creature you don't control. Its controller draws a card. Creature with bribery counters on them can't attack or block. So you just nullified a big creature of theirs so that it doesn't attack you back. Great. 
Selvala, the Explorer Return. So for one, a green and a white, you get a 2-4 with Parlay. So you can tap it. Each player reveals the top card of his or library. For each non-land card revealed this way, add a green mana to your mana pool and gain one life. Then each player draws a card. You're benefiting from it. They're benefiting from it. Everyone's happy. A crow and horse. So for four, you've got a 0-4 defender. When it enters the battlefield, an opponent gains control of it. Great. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent creates a 1-1 white soldier creature token. You're happy for your opponent to have a card of yours, and it just means everybody else is going to be happy as well because they're going to be creating little things to add to their armies as well. Nice little card. Windborne Muse. So for three and a white, you've got a 2-3 flyer. With creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature he or she controls that attacking you. Again, works great, taxing your opponent for attacking you. Imagine having all four of them out. They'll have to pay loads of mana just to be able to attack you with one creature. Psychosis Crawler. So for five, you've got uh, power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. You can draw loads of cards. It's always going to be pretty big. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. It'll end up doing loads of damage without actually having to swing in. So you can hide behind your little wall... Draw loads of cards, deal lots of damage. That's what you're happy doing. Cuzzle, Tyrant of the Cliffs. So for three and two reds, you've got a 5-4. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you're the defending player, create a 3-3 three, three Ogre, unless his opponent pays three. You're taxing them to attack you again. If he's out, you're just going to make yourself a nice little army of chump blockers. And to be honest, with three threes... You're going to end up, after a few few times, you're going to end up with a nice little army that's going to finish someone off. Realm Seekers is next. So for 4 and 2 green, you've got, comes in with a naught naught. Enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where X is the total number of cards in all players' hands. It's going to be huge. The amount of card draw you're giving everybody else, he's going to be huge. So for 2 and a green, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from him and search your library for a land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Great. Lots more mana ramp. You're going to have plenty of plus one, plus one counters on him to be able to do that with. Can't complain there. Rubble Hulk is next. So for four, a red and a green. You His power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Works great with that previous card. So if you can get loads of lands out on the battlefield, which you probably will end up will do, he's going to be massive. And he's got Blood Rush. So for one, a red and a green. Discard him. Target attacking creature gets plus X, plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of lands you control. So, realistically, you can either have a big body, or you could end up discarding him, and without your opponents realising, you could buff one of your opponent's creatures who's attacking someone else and help finish them off. <laughs> Great. Blazing Archon. This is a really nice card for you in this deck. So, for six and three whites, quite expensive. You've got a flying five, six, but creatures can't attack you. Great little card. For somehow you can protect him long enough... You're going to end up finishing them off and they won't be just won't be able to attack you. Really nice card there. Imperial Plate is next. So for two, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each card in your hand. Makes something massive because you're always going to have lots of cards. Howling Mine. So for two, at the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Great. Everyone's going to be happy with a card draw. You're getting card draw, they're getting card draw, so they won't bother dealing with it. Temple Bell, so for three, you get to tap it, each player draws a card. Great for you, great for them, they're not going to want to get rid of it. Vence's Journal, for five, you have no maximum hand size. Perfect, you'll have loads of card draw, and it's going to help with that. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life for each card in your hand. People might want to get rid of this for you, but you're going to end up having loads of life, you're going to get yourself bigger. Great little card in this de in this deck. Keening Stone is next, so for 6 you can pay 5 and tap it. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into her graveyard, where X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. You've protected yourself and you're just going to mill them down. Nice. Nice way of doing that. Oath of Druids is next, so for 1 and a green this is a bit of a bit of a mouthful going on. So at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player chooses a target player who controls more creatures than he or she does and, him, and is his or her opponent. The first player may reveal cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a creature card. If he or she does, that player puts that card onto the battlefield and all other cards revealed this way into his or graveyard. This is great. If you're behind, you can get yourself a creature out. If your opponents are behind, they get to choose to do that and you can end up just milling them down. 
great. People aren't going to want to get rid of this because you're helping them. And you can end up, the benefit of that is you'll kneel them down and keep doing that and keep doing that until they end up losing the game. Rights of Flourishing is next. So for two and a green, at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. They're not going to have any problem with that. Each player may play an additional land on, his, on each of his or her turns. Again, they're not going to have a problem with that. You may benefit more from the card draw that you're going to be getting and more mana ramp that you're going to be getting from this, but no one's going to want to get rid of that. They won't attack you for as well because they won't want to get rid of that. Lurking Predators is next, so for 4 and 2 greens. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put that card in the bottom of your library. Great. They're going to be casting lots of spells because you're giving them loads of mana and you're giving them loads of card draw. And you're going to get yourselves all the creatures out of your deck. And you're going to get them on the battlefield for free. Can't complain about that. Next, we've got the instant swan song. So you get to counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery spell. Its controller gets a blue 2 2 blue bird coat creature token with flying. You might get rid of something massive of them, but they've still got a little benefit from it. No one's going to complain. Oblation is next. So for two and a white, you get an instant. The owner of target non land permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then draws two cards. Again, you've got rid of one of their big threats. They get to draw two cards. They may end up drawing it again. You just don't know. But they're not going to be quite as angry at you for getting rid of one of their big threats. Rain, Reigns of Power is next. So for two and two blue, untap all creatures you control and all creatures target opponents control. You and that opponent gain control of all creatures the other controls until the end of turn. Those creatures gain haste until the end of turn. This is, this is incredible for this deck. You can let the opponents get a massive army because they're going to with all the card draw and ramp they're going to be getting. Then when they least expect it, you play this down, you've got absolutely nothing in front of you as your army or little tiny creatures, and just swing in and kill them. Perfect. Mines of Glow is next, so for one you get a sorcery of Join Forces. Starting with you, each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player draws X cards where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Perfect. You get to play a spell, Every you know, players are going to want to join in. And they're getting loads of card draw out of it. Yes, you're getting card draw, but you're only having to pay one for potentially five cards, six cards. Nice little card there. Really like that. Collective Voyage is next. So for one, you've got a sorcery again with joint forces. Starting with you, each player may pay an amount of mana. And each player searches his or her library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Puts them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffles to his or her library. You can end up getting yourself really big. They can get themselves up really big. But the fact is that you're only paying one for it. You might pay another couple if you want to. They can join in. Everybody's going to get massive really quickly. Really like that. Hoof Prince of the Stag. One and a white. So you've got a tribal enchantment here. Whenever you draw a card, you may put a hoof print counter on it. For two and a white, remove four hoof print counters from it. Create a 4-4 four, four white elemental creature token with flying. Activate this only and ability on your turn. Loads of card draw. You're going to get yourself. You can build yourself up a nice little army here of four four flyers. Swing over the top and kill someone with them later on in the game, and they finish fighting with someone else. Great. Tempt with discovery. So for three and a green, we've got a sorcery with tempting offer here. So search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. Each opponent may search his or her library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield as well. For each opponent who searches his or library this way, search for your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield as well. Then each player who searches a library this way shuffles it. So you're giving them the option of getting themselves a land card on your turn, but then you're benefiting more from doing it, so they have to make a little decision there. But to be perfectly honest, most people are going to want to do that anyway. Great little card. Next we've got Wave of Reckoning. Sorry about that. So for four and a white, uh, we've got a sorcery. So each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Nice way of removing lots and lots of creatures. Reverse the Sands is next. So for six and two white, you get to redistribute any number of players' life totals. <laughs> this could be great fun. You could be lacking behind, steal someone who's got loads of life. You could end up just before swinging in to kill someone, you can give someone else's life total who's less than theirs in and then kill them with it. Great. Blasphemous Axe, so for 8 and a red. Blasphemous Axe costs 1 less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, so it could become really, really cheap there. It deals 13 damage to each creature. Potentially, 
you've wiped the board completely for even just one red. That's great. And then we're on to the lands there, so we've got Exotic Orchard, Forbidden Orchard, so you, this one's nice. Whenever you tap it for mana, target opponent creates a 1-1 colourless spirit creature token. They're not going to mind you tapping it for mana, especially considering it doesn't have any cost else to come into the battlefield with. Homeward Path is really nice, so each player gains control of all creatures he or she owns. So later on you've given your opponent lots of different things to make them better, to maybe stop attacking you. Later on in the game you can tap it, get everything back and swing in with them. Great. Got some islands, mountains, more basic lands. Ash Barrens is one of the cards that I wanted for cube, it definitely will end up in there. Tap it for a colourless manner if you want it have it into the battlefield that way then you can land cycle it later on in the game if you need a specific basic land you probably won't with this deck to be perfectly honest or early on in the game if you're a little bit mana screwed you can just pay the one discard it and get yourself a basic land great you've got some bounce lands there evolving wilds tap lands more bounce lands Okay, this one's quite interesting. So, tap it for a colour, so you can pay two and tap it. Sacrifice it, search your library for a forest card and a plains card and put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Great. Later on in the game, if you need the basic lands, perfect. Again, same type of thing there, really nice. Tap for three. Opal Palace, so you can tap it for a colourless or pay one, tap it to add any, a one mana of any colour of your commander's colour identity. If you spend this mana to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with additional plus one plus one counter on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Nice little strong card there. Pain land there, tap to come in, Terramorph Expanse. Enter the battlefield tap, you can have to sacrifice it unless you pay one. And a bounce land. Again, the cards thankfully haven't been stuck together, like I had in the first deck I opened, so I'm glad to see that. Overall, this is the epitome of a group hug pillow fort style deck. The goal being to sit back and grow through rampant creatures, making everyone else happy so they don't attack you. The strategy here is to hide behind your defensive cards like Propaganda and Ghostly Prison, which tax your opponents to attack you, and with plenty of wrath effects as well, if someone's getting too big, means that you won't ever have a problem with later on. Then, once your opponents have nearly finished each other off, you change stance and come in for the kill. This deck looks pretty fun overall. It certainly surprised me a little if I'm honest, as my first reaction was I don't think I'm going to like this or it's not going to be for me. It certainly proved me wrong. Tell me what you think of this deck in the comments section below. Did it surprise you too? Links to the deck openings for the other four Commander 2016 decks can be found on this page and in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel to grow. There has been a massive increase to subscriber levels, so thank you all so much for joining the channel. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for more Magic the Gathering content. I just want to say a huge thank you to Pendrakes for getting the products to me on release day. The customer service was fantastic when ordering the products, so I could get the videos out for you as soon as possible. For the UK viewers, there is a link to the store in the description below, which has very competitive prices for all trading card products. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.